definitely. Oh my goodness. I'm, I'm so excited. We got Sister Evelyn on the line too. Um, she um, takes people to Peru. So um, Evelyn, um, how you doing sis? Um, hey. We bring you on in and we're gonna send our love and our <laughs> warmth and wholeness to Sister Venetia as she moves on to her next task <laughs> on her journey. <laughs> we appreciate you. And, uh, yeah, you are loved thank and appreciated. You. Uh, well, thank you so much for being here. To be with all, with all, <laughs> all of you. And continue the work because this, this beautiful work that you're doing, continue the work. Um, Sister Evelyn, I know she's going to be coming on. Continue that work. I'm so I'm so happy that we have some folks kind of facilitating a passageway and a pathway for us to kind of experience some things that it's just naturally within our DNA that we're just kind of reopening up to and introducing ourselves to. But just stay on the path. Keep surrounding, keep surrounding yourself with good vibrations, good folks who love and care about you, who's going to love on you. You know, just, just keep that flowing. But I thank y'all. And um, I appreciate I appreciate you holding space for this. It's really beautiful. Really, really beautiful. So wonderful um, to meet everybody. Thank you, everyone. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. I can hear you. I Yay. wanted to you see the sister's face before I leave and say hello. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Eve, your camera on. Uh, is my that, camera on or right no? Now. You can't see. No, Evelyn, let me, let me check. Let me, uh, okay. Let's see if your camera comes on now. <laughs> Yeah. Ah. <laughs> hello. Hey everyone. How, How are you? Hello. Thank you for How thank you for everything that you guys are doing right here. It's beautiful bringing this information out to the world. It's amazing. And thank you, Mark, for inviting me. And I'm like, oh my God, how do I do this? <laughs> I'm like, am I on? Am I on? Yes. <laughs> um Wow, yeah, so I was just listening to um, you guys talking about this beautiful plant medicine, and I am so happy, I am so happy to hear your stories and everything you guys have been sharing with one another, and um, just a little bit about what I do, um, I, I did journey with, with, with mother Aya, uh, it's funny, my story was more like, um, I never really done any type of other plant medicines, when I first um, journeyed with Mother I, I never did DMT or shrooms or anything. And I'm like, well, I just want to go to the mother of it all and just take it from there and work myself down. <laughs> so um, it, it's really um, a beautiful and awakening experience. And like I was hearing some of you guys talking about uh, having a sitter. Uh, um, making sure of the shamans now this plant medicines are coming to be very uh, famous. So a lot of people are going to Peru or Colombia or Brazil and taking this even in New York, even in California. And I'm hearing more and more about how this is becoming so commercial out there. And one of the biggest things that I would like to tell you guys is that be mindful and be very discerning of who you take this medicine with because um, everybody thinks they can hold space and believe me it is not that simple it's very you opening up photos and dimensions um, and and other frequencies and other levels uh, to hold space and if you're not sovereign you know if you're not in your power you don't want to open some portals some houses out there some dimensions you know so you want to be always in, in your heart space and being in, in that loving space. I always say love is your greatest weapon and being able to stay in that space of love and, and oneness and unity while holding that space and making sure that the shaman that you're with is also in that space is very important. Uh, for me, uh, I went to Peru my first time for 15 days and I was out in the jungle by myself in a little tippy holding, uh, doing ayahuasca for the first time ever. And I didn't have no one. It was just me and the two shamans that couldn't even speak Spanish. Uh, they were speaking Quechua, which is a, uh, a, their own language. And I was like, oh my goodness, how am I going to communicate? And the craziest thing for me was it wasn't even being with plant medicine that scared me the most. It was being in the middle of the jungle <laughs> with no light, no electricity, uh, no water. 
and just being like, I could, somebody can come in tonight and kill me and nobody will ever know, you know? So it was like, oh man, Eve. But I was so ready, you know, when mother called me, I was so ready to, I was like, I'm ready to die. But I, I guess at that moment, I didn't know because I was like seven years ago, but I was, I was ready to die my, an ego death, have that ego death. But then I was like, shit, if I have to die physically, then so be it, you know? Um, I'm, I was just ready to let go and let a lot of layers and just really, really just clean house, clean my temple. And I was really ready for that. And the people that came, those two shamans, they were like 70 years old. It was a woman and a man holding space for me, too. And, uh, and wow, I went through a lot. I went through a lot. And one of the biggest things that I got from there was you have to bring people to Peru. Uh, when Mother Earth and, and spirits talk to me, they, you know, come. And I'm like, how do I, how am I going to do that? I don't know anything. They were like, listen, we're going to walk you through it. And, and you're going to be bringing people to Peru. You're going to be holding space for people you're gonna be staring and I'm like listen you know what let go go with the flow and I did and it's this couple of years wow it's been amazing and and just the setting is so important you know and I say first I have to walk my walk before I can take anyone you know to where my walk was I'm like listen this is what I did it might not help you it might help you a little bit it might not at all but what led me to where I'm at in my past and how much I've grown is because I did this. And, you know, it might resonate with you. It might not resonate with you. As long as you follow your heart and as long as you, you follow that intuition, believe me, that will always guide you home, you know? And they're like, okay. So I, I you know, Mark went with me. Uh, I think it was last year you went with me. And, yeah, like, and it was a very interesting, it was interesting because Mark came also came to the jungle. So he didn't get to have, um, he came, he went to, he experienced two types of, 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 of settings, you know? So setting, the setting of, is very important. The setting of, of, of the ayahuasca journey or any type of medicine that you do for that matter uh, is very important. The in, intention that you have, why is it that you want to do it? You know, what's your purpose? What's behind it? How much do you respect? How much of a diet, a dieta are you going to do? You know, um, there's people that go on a diet for a month, you know, and ayahuasca knows. Aya knows, you know, how much respect you're giving or, or, or how long you've been on a dieta. And, um, and she, she, she knows. So I think that for those people that have never done it, you know, that are gonna start with it. be mindful of follow your heart, follow your intuition, be mindful of where you're gonna do it. Be mindful if something doesn't feel right, don't go. You know, just follow that that that, that part of yourself. Don't go. If, if, if something doesn't really, you know, I I done a lot of um, when I went to Peru a couple of times before taking uh, groups there. I first felt like I had to walk the walk. And I was like, okay, I like this shaman. I like this, this people. I like the way they hold space here. I like the way they hold space here. And I can bring people to, to those facilities that I feel comfortable with. I will not take you to a facility that I feel like I'm not comfortable with. So that's very important too. Uh, but if anybody has any questions, shoot, man, because I'm here. I'm, I'm in your service. I'm here for you guys. So ask away. I mean... Ayahuasca, I done more than I don't. I, I don't even know. <laughs> and every time it's different, you know. And every time I put myself in in that room in that temple, and I'm sitting there, and I'm like, Eve, what are you doing? Why are you here again? Are you putting yourself through this? And it's always layers of growth. You know, it's so beautiful, and it's so amazing. Like it kicks your ass, but you know, at the end of the road, you you five hours later, you're like, wow, yes. It's, it's everything I wanted. You cry, you laugh, you cry some more, you laugh some more, and you're with your tribe. And then at the end, everybody just hugging each other, supporting each other, and you become family. You know, so we're doing another journey in March, and 
it's gonna be amazing. I, I'm so excited. It, you know, it's always like new when you're sitting down with that plant medicine. It's like, ah, here I go again. You know, it's like a ride. It's like a ride. Just letting go and cleansing and clearing. And ultimately, you know, you use them and and you use them as tools. Everything, you know, your 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 shroom experiences, your ayahuasca experiences. Yeah, you have to understand. Everything. Yes. Oh, sorry, sorry, Sister Evelyn. No mean it. No mean to interrupt. I'm sorry. Um, yes, yes, yes. I just want to uh, formally um, say my uh, say <laughs> my uh, goodbyes. I'm sorry to Sister Venetia because she got to get back to her healing yes. work. Got so much wisdom and knowledge to drop to us and give to us. So before we get into that, um, I want to uh, also send out. Hold on, give me one second. I need to send this actually to the chat again, uh, Sister Venetia's information um, again, and um, we're going to send her on her way. Uh, Sister Venetia, thank you so much for joining us. Um, she has a lot of healing to work, healing work to do on her end, and I appreciate you for being here. Thank you so much, Sister, and uh, we'll definitely have to connect soon for a part two, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much. It's, like I said, it was so fantastic sit with all of you and have everyone share their wonderful wisdom and experiences and like I said keep keep going with the good work this is beautiful I just wanted to, to wait and at least say hey Evelyn because I knew hey. I was going to be leaving <laughs> shortly after you came in. see your face and, and hear your voice sis so I didn't want to scoot off before I had the opportunity to do so so I wish I had the chance to sit and listen to more of your beautiful experience and expertise yeah. Good evening, Thank everybody, you so and much. good energy, and and hug and love up on you, and have a good evening wherever, however your time zone is situated. All right, <laughs> you too. Take care. Take care. Uh, uh, on your love. Love. love, love. Okay, so sorry about that, Sister Evelyn. My apologies. Um, you were talking about your. Um, your travel and your journey in March. Yeah, I'm doing one in March and it's gonna, you know, the group is coming together very nicely. But I was I was mentioning about how amazing these plant medicines are and they're to be used as tools, right? And um and then ultimately hopefully once we activate and upgrade our DNA to its fullest extent, we'll be able to to see past the veil where these plant medicines usually takes us, right? So uh, if anyone has any questions or comments, please, you know, I'm an open book, anything you guys would like to share, but uh, the ayahuasca journey has been a very so beautiful experience for, for me and for the tribe that has come with me. And I definitely think that everybody should always be discerning, follow your heart and have an intention always why are you doing this you know what's the what what is your questions that you have what is it that you wish to heal um and grow from it i feel that ayahuasca is the mother of all plants when it comes to to it you know and so any questions or anything anyone i'm just ready to go <laughs> i want to go on my aya trip oh man. i got your instagram i'm already looking i'm like she said, yeah. and so Sister Evelyn, you were um, mentioned and uh, made aware to me by Brother Mark. Yeah. And so, yeah. Um, yeah, shout out to Mark for pulling strings five minutes before we went live. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> just that did that. yeah, 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 that oh, yeah. he won playing games. And, uh, <laughs> and I'm so glad because you dropped so much knowledge. I wanted to know though, um, what. What called you to do, um, before you did shrooms, before you did anything else, well, you didn't, you, you went to ayahuasca specifically. Mm -hmm. And what drew you to ayahuasca in particular versus something such as DMT? Um, because we hear so much about the similarities and things like that, but um, what, what called you to go to Peru of all places versus any anywhere else so yeah fine. well i i um i have a pet peeve on like um 
when I want something and I want to know about something, I want to go directly to the source. So it's like if, you know, if I want to swim with dolphins, I want to go to where are the most dolphins at and where is the mother dolphin? And I want to swim with the mother dolphin type of stuff, you know. So I felt that Peru was known as the Ayahuasqueros, are two different types of tribes in Peru. There's a Andean Cuero shamans that they're known for their Wachuma and San Pedro ceremonies, which is in the mountains. And then you have the Ayahuasqueros from Peru, which are known for the ayahuasca and the vine over there and how potent and the different types of ayahuascas that there are in the Amazon jungle. So what uh, told me what Spirit said was, for me, it was all about being in the jungle being with the people that actually been doing this for thousands of years in the Amazon. So I felt that I needed to go and connect with it directly there to be with Mother Earth, with the younger people, with the shamans there directly. So when people were in New York and telling me, listen, we're having ayahuasca in Brooklyn. I was like, peace. That's good for you, but that you know it wasn't for me. She's like, I'm you know? good. No, I'm good. I'm good. You know, so for me, it was like, no, I I really just want to experience my first time, and and for main part is making sure that this plan is given to me with sacredness, and because I have respect so much for myself and respect for mother that I wanted to just go to a place where I can feel like I am in the place where I'm supposed to be, where it's grown, where I see it being cooked. I mean, I saw it being cooked. I saw it, I cut the vine, you know, I was there doing the chakruna and the mixing and singing to it and, and sending all my love to it. Like so, Tiffany yeah. Uh, like, I'm yeah. Really <laughs> yeah. Can you hear me now? Okay, yeah. we hear you now, sir. <laughs> I had to quit everything and I had to come back on. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. So, so I went right there. So I was in the middle of, of the jungle. And and what called me was actually on my spiritual path. I said, okay, everybody kept talking about ayahuasca here and there. So I said, okay, I know that I had a lot of work still to continue doing. And I said, if I want to continue healing and becoming a teacher or a mentor, I, I really want to shed a lot of the things that I feel like I need shedding. And if this is a tool that can assist me in doing so, then so be it. I'll go there. And it was interesting enough because um, my brother had passed away a couple of years ago, before that, 10 years ago. And with ayahuasca was the first time that that when she had me and I took the drink and I was on my journey, like I saw my brother's death all over again. And I cried and I cried. And she, she said, you know, you, ne you hold space for your family so much that you never, ever you know, mourn his death. And I'm like, yeah, but he died like 10 years ago. They were like, yeah, but that's still in there. So cry, baby. This is your chance. This is it. You know, I'll hold space for you this time. So it was stuff like that, that, you know, that you have emotional stuff that you think that you probably surpassed or already healed from and it comes back up. You know, so a lot of the things I wanted to be as, as, as light as my heart for it to be as light as a feather as it can be. You know, when you have the Egyptian Anuris carrying the, the balance of the heart and the feather, you know, and you cannot go on to the next level until your heart is light as a feather. I'm like, I want my heart to be as light as a feather. But you know what? Then you got to let go of that emotional drama and those baggages and that anger or grief or resentment. And, you know, if I is going to assist me in doing that, then, you know, uh, I'm going to Peru, I'm going to the jungle. So it was all about making sure that I was in the right space for me, if that answers your question. Oh. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Wow, very good. <laughs> I do a, an Awakening Illuminated Hearts workshop where it's all about being in the heart space and being in that bliss state and, you know, taking life and being in, in love with life and, and directing everything to your heart space. And that's what it ends up coming to. It's becoming the observer of the situations, of the drama, of the people that are, are being manifested by you 
in your reality to mm-hmm. teach you lessons, right? So sometimes a we continue with <laughs> a lot of lessons. Sometimes we fail. And I'm like, well, I got an F on that one because I'll have to repeat yeah, that lesson I'm again. I'm tapping out of that one over there. <laughs> I'm good with that one. Yeah, so at times you just, you know what? I'll just sit here and become the observer of everything because then you have all these thoughts and all these in people that live inside your head, right? Mm-hmm. The mom, it's from the there. It's a lot there. <laughs> you gotta talk to them sometimes. Like, ah, yeah. no. <laughs> like I know what you're doing. You know? <laughs> so, so becoming the observer is so huge, and becoming being the awareness is is so huge. And I think that a lot of the plant medicines and having this awareness and understanding what something triggers us, you know, is something that we still have to work within ourselves, right? So it's like, okay, am I going to give my power to this situation? And what is it teaching me? You know, so it's beautiful that you, you mentioned because a lot of people say, I want to be here and I want to be there. or I want to do this on my path and I want to do that. And I'm like, why? And they're like, because I need to work. And I'm like, that's it. Don't, don't be so hard on yourself. Being the aware, you know, being the observer and being aware that you need to work on those things. And little by little, you know, you have all these plant medicines. And like I, I mentioned, these are all just tools. Like, oh, you know, the sages didn't walk around with, with ayahuasca and the book bags and freaking shrooms and palo santo and crystal stones, you know. They, it came to a point that these sages, these masters, just, just themselves, they were the tools. They were, they were one with everything. They were ayahuasca. They were embodying every plant medicine, every one. The dark, the light, the, the the cosmos, and as they walked in, they just they just knew it. So I'm like, you know, we just gotta wear that, you know. We just gotta remember. And it's you, the guys were talking about frequency and vibration, and it's just tuning into that frequency, that vibration, that knowingness, that divine essence, your I am presence of of just being in that enlightenment stage or that just it's just like radio station right it's turning mm-hmm. the dial to like to get you can that. hear this radio station <laughs> turning sometimes i was bugging like i said oh that's just me yeah, <laughs> that's like, just okay. me turning some dials yeah so sometimes you're listening to like you know hip-hop and sometimes you're listening to like it's not them and all this and amazing classical, and classical like, music. what the heck i ain't turned to the station and then you're like all right let me go with it yeah, yeah. I just ride and, the wave. Like, I'm just a surfer on this galactic <laughs> wave, just like, okay. And that's what, and that's what life is. Over there. Yeah, and that's what life is. All these experiences are like different radio stations, or different vibrations and tones of music, you know? So, becoming the aware and the observer of all of this and knowing and understanding that you are it and all. And, like you said um, earlier, you are everything and nothing, you know? At the same time, it's so beautiful. But thank you guys for, for your wisdom and your knowledge and partaking in all of this. It's so beautiful. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> wow. Your wisdom and knowledge, man. You know, remember when I met you, I was super <laughs> serious. I was super serious. I know. I, was, <laughs> I, had, a whole, I had a head full of knowledge. And, um, mm-hmm. I was applying it, but it, I wasn't. I w- it was just heavy, and I just remember what you you consistently represented in my life from 2017 all the way through 2018. Just this consistent mirroring of like, hey, you know, let's just have fun. You know, have fun. Mm-hmm. Have, have fun. Have, you know, have fun. It's so funny because when I did one journey in Mexico, I went and I was with my teacher at that time. And he says, listen, we're going to inner earth. With, we're going to just travel in spirit. We're going inside inner earth. And we're going to meet some beings that are living in the earth. So Hold I'm on, like, oh. I think your, your microphone is crackling up. Can you try unplugging it? Uh, there? Is that better? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Okay, so... So I'm, I'm like, okay, I'm going to, I'm, I'm, I'm like, those are, the, those are the beings that I'm about to talk about. They're like, I'm like, okay, I'm going to travel into inner earth. I'm going to meet some beings that are going to, you know, give me some wisdom. And I'm excited. And I'm like, I don't know what the hell is happening. I don't know if I'm making this thing up. I don't know if it's my, but if this is all through meditation and I'm 
encountering these beings and we we walked through inner earth and they're looking at me and I'm looking at them and I'm like, and they're like, you don't believe we're here, right? And I'm like, nope. And they're like, why do we always get a non-believe non-believers? And I'm like, guys, I could hear you. They're like, yeah, but you don't believe. So do us a favor, be a child. Just, just, just let it go. Let go of the mind, let go of the head. I was like, all right, fuck it, let's go. <laughs> so we start traveling and through inner earth, I ended up in space and I'm like, holy smokes, Eve, you've gone crazy. This is it, you're done, you know? And they're like, no, listen, just let go. So I let go and they show me a lot of stuff. And then they took me back to inner earth and I asked them, I said, listen, I said, this is really important for me, this path. And I said, I really need to share some light with my brothers and sisters up there. Like, what's the message you guys got for me? And I got really serious. And I was like, listen, you really need to tell me what, what, what should I relate to them? Like, you guys are here living in this inner world and your, your, your world looks beautiful and it's amazing. What can I bring out? to them and what can I share with them so I'm over here thinking they're gonna give me the the scrolls so I'm like oh, you gotta be ready for this they're gonna give you some nice wisdom and you have to bring this and this is gonna change the world my mind right and they just said you do me a favor and just tell them to let go tell them it's not that serious tell them to relax tell them that the bills will get paid the work will always be there, but tell them to sing in the shower more. Tell them to laugh a little harder. Tell them to yeah. have fun. It's yeah. not that serious. Ooh. And I was like, wow. I was like, really? They were like, tell them to dance more. Tell them to sing more. Tell them not to take it so serious. It's the path, everything that you guys are doing. You guys, you guys are too like... We got to do this and we got to do that and we got to do this and we got to pay here and we got to, you know, it's always like, oh, go, 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 go. It's just, mm -hmm. No, have fun. Let go. Chill. Yeah. Laugh a little. Have, and I was like, that's it? They were like, that's, that's it. it. They were like, you, if you guys were to see the way we look at you guys, you guys are too strict and you guys are too serious. Have fun. Enjoy and just bug out. Just enjoy and be a kid again. And that stood with me forever. Like, be a kid again. Be a kid again. And, and connect to that inner child. And you know how you were a kid and you still use your imagination and believe it. When you were like, when I had my Barbie, which I never had a Barbie when I was a little girl, so that's just too expensive for my parents. I had a Barbie. And she was there. And I had my Barbie. And I had my dolls. And I have my dogs. And everything was imagined. And that's the beauty of, of how we cook our co creators is that. It is through imagination that we create everything. It's just, that's it. It is through imagination. When people tell me, well, I don't know if I'm imagining or it's really happening. And I'm like, man, imagination, imagination is the key. <laughs> Do you understand? Imagination is the key to everything. So it was interesting to, to have that experience and understanding that. But when Mark came into the workshop and Mark is like, oh my God, I'm like, and I'm like, hey, laugh a little more. Have fun. Enjoy, you know? So he's like, okay, yeah, yeah. I think I'm going I'm to just, just, <laughs> just let go. Just let go. You just got to let go. And I'm like, yeah, you know, it's, it's, life is a dream, right? Or, or, or like a dream, right? So why not enjoy our dream, right? Why not have fun with it, you know? Why not? just ride with it you know enjoy the ride with it it's, it's always, when i met you on my path what i what it really what it really sank in deep was everything that you create results from the seed that you plant that you sow mm -hmm. and if you're not seeding joy if you're not expecting joy or if you're not asking for joy or, or intending joy or meeting the manifestation with joy as you plant the seed, then that's not what happens. It's just not how it happens. It's vibrations. It's vibrational frequency. It has no resonance. So if you plant and it's so serious, you're going to get serious. <laughs> yeah. So you got to wake up every day like, yeah. Yeah. What are you excited about? I'm having about? a great what day. I'm having the best day today. I think every day. I'm like, my day is going to be lit. 
<laughs> you're right. Yep. Yeah. I'm a wet girl. Like, you're so extra. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. that's so important, man. That's that's like you know, you, you vibration, energy, right? So the world's gonna reflect to you what you give out. Mm-hmm. Right? So that's why that I said because not and, everybody and, has that. So well, when you I tell people, the world, you I know. tell people you you guys, you know, we all want to change the world, right? But we got to change ourselves first because the yeah. world is nothing but a reflection of us. <laughs> so when we start living our life with peace and love and joy and happiness, guess what? Next thing it you know, comes. you're manifesting people that are like fun and you have all these adventures and you're like, man, like it's magic. It's alchemy. It's so magical. It's magical. Like, yeah. Wow. I live that. Amazing. That is so true. I live that. I attracted that and I've seen that manifest in my life. Like my tribe is so dope. Like <laughs> the people in my life, like Squad. I like I could say and limit myself and say I couldn't imagine having such wonderful people in my life, but that's false because I did imagine that and I did attract that and I did co-create that and bring these individuals to me just like they brought just like they brought me to them. Exactly. So it's all a process where we're all kind of linking up and we don't even realize we're calling each other but we be calling each other through our vibrational frequency yeah. when we're admitting it'd be like come on bro come <laughs> on, we sitting to get together mm, love on you love you too love you too like it's yeah. so dope like that's why i just be waking up every day like i'm i'm so grateful bad things can happen you know people can are transitioning right. i just Someone recently transitioned just yesterday, somebody very close to me. And what I got from that was, you know, he's not gone. He's in a different space. And he is, he is on his journey. And what he wants for me is to be the best version of myself and continue to be happy Mm -hmm. and just to do my work here. Because, you know, everybody's not going to be able to stay as long as we think that they should stay, but it's not up to us to decide what's going on with other people in their personal journeys. We just have to understand that, you know, everything has its time and place and we all have our season. So when your season is up, you fit into going to other realms. And that's how I see, I just know he in another room creating, doing some dope stuff. (laughs) Yes, He's an artist. He is a beautiful person and he was a light to this world. And a lot of people are going to miss him and still love him. But we're going to see him again because I know he with me. He with all the ancestors that be riding with me. Like Mark was saying, like our ancestors are in their roots. And it's funny how all these plants have roots. So that makes perfect sense that these plant medicines are actually our ancestors because our roots have roots Mm. in the physical and in the etheric realm. So I'm just appreciate the whole space with y'all. I appreciate everybody's energy. (laughs) Y'all are all dope. Y'all are all my family. I love y'all. I'm just so appreciative for all of this. Y'all are dope as shit. All the people in the comment boxes who are watching, y'all are dope too. I love y'all. Like, I appreciate y'all. Like, it's all love. It's all family. So much Thank love. You. Thank you for that. So much love, guys. I will add to that on um, surrendering. Surrendering. Mm, surrendering to to what mother needs to to show you and mm. sometimes it's like um when you start fighting when you you know resist when you resist persist so sometimes it's like you know you're going through that bad journey and just surrender and be like you know what show me like this is scary show me i surrender to it what's what's there i trust you trust mm. you and i surrender so it's like jumping on a roller coaster. You don't know where you're going to end up. You know, like, yeah. oh, shoot, when am I going to just let him go? Um, Surrendering. Mm-hmm. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I trust you. You're like, no. <laughs> you're crying and you're laughing. That's <laughs> how it is. You're crying, you're laughing, then you're cool. Then you're cool. Uh-uh. <laughs> yep. Exactly. Surrender, surrender, surrender.